are listening to the Marriage Clinic Podcast, a podcast on love, marriage, and personal development. Our purpose is to inspire and equip you with knowledge and skills to enable you to have lasting and fulfilling relationships. Now your host, Joshua Morgan. Hello, hello, hello. This is our Marriage Clinic Podcast. We're bringing all the energy in today. I'm extremely excited to be with you this evening. It should be 8 p.m. if you are in Ghana or if you are within our time zone. From whichever time zone you are watching, you are welcome or listening, you are welcome. Today, I'm excited. This is the Marriage Clinic Podcast, a podcast about love, a podcast about relationships, marriage, and your personal development. And my name is Joshua Mogri. And I am glad you're taking the time to listen to what we have today. Let me give you um, a moment to kindly share this with friends, to put this out there. The more people you give this to and you recommend us to, the more people who can be touched and blessed by the Marriage Clinic podcast and lives become better. It's coming to you for free. So please give it to someone for free. All right. Today... Today, 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 today. I was telling the team just before we started recording that um, this subject is a heavy subject. This subject is a heavy subject and um, I debated in my mind if I should do this series or not. Because this is a series about love, this is a series about marriage, but sometimes marriage does not work out. So I'm starting a rather strange series, but I think it's going to be important for all of us. And the next probably three or four sessions, episodes, are going to be on when it comes to divorce. When it comes to divorce. If you know, if you have a friend or a family member that's considering a divorce, please share these next four episodes with them and let them come to an informed decision if that is the best choice for them. And even if it is the best choice for them, I will share some information that will help make the transition better. So um, get in here, focus in here. We are starting something interesting. When it comes to divorce, I've witnessed at close range divorce and separation. I'm the product of my parents separated. Um, They probably didn't have an official divorce, even though they filed papers at a point, but I'm a product of um, a divorced home or a broken home. So it's not a subject that I come to lightly. Um, So it's ironic that um, a child from a broken home is now creating podcasts and content that is helping marriages to stay together. Hey, but that's the way the God we serve works. So one thing you need to remember is that anybody who has been married for more than 10 minutes has considered divorce. When you go through a problem in the marriage, there's the tendency to say, maybe my life would have been easier if I was divorced. You, you get it. So if you are married and probably you are listening to this and you've, you are going through a big problem, you probably have not been talking to each other for uh, a couple of days and you are there sitting in your car or you are sitting in the office and you are saying, maybe if we ended this marriage, it will be easier. You are not alone and a lot of people think about these things. All right. And for some people, divorce is a constant threat. I know people who every time there's a fight, one partner says, maybe we should get divorced. So you see it being thrown. And a lot of the time, it's, it's sad to say, but a lot of the time, it is the woman that threw the divorce word out there. In, okay, let me, I'm a scientist, so let me make some clarification. In my practice and in my counseling of marriages, I realize that women threaten divorce a lot more than men do. And in fact, the statistics actually do prove, I think it's close to 80% of filing of divorces done by women. All right? So a lot of the time, the man is threatened with divorce, divorce, divorce. And sometimes the woman is also threatened with divorce. 
And there are times you feel like there is no hope for the marriage and it's sad. There are also times where there is grounds for divorce. In latter episodes, there are some situations where I advise couples, you need to get a divorce and you need to get a divorce quickly. So I'm not totally against the concept of divorce. I just think that divorce should not be an issue we approach lightly. So I'm going to give you 10 reasons to reconsider the divorce you want to go for. 10 reasons to reconsider the divorce you want to go for. Reason number one, divorce will hurt your children. Divorce will hurt your children. Look, I'm in my late 30s and I still feel the pain of my parents' divorce. I'm a grown man. I have my own kids. I've been married for well over a decade, but I still feel the pain and the regret of my parents separating. In fact, um, I think it was two days ago, I was driving down the street and I remembered the last time I saw my father and mother um, in the same place as husband and wife. They were having a fight over, if you're African, they were having a fight over cow legs. (laughs) I won't go into the story, but that issue came and my dad was, that was when he was finally packing out. And I remember him picking his bags and saying, I'm leaving you and the kids. And well, long story, someday I'll share the story, but I am well into my thirties. And this happened when I was, I think I was about seven years old. I'm well into my thirties. It's over a third, it's over 30 years ago, but that memory is still so fresh in my mind. So what am I saying? Divorce will always hurt the kids. So before you jump into saying, I want a divorce, please do think about the children that are in the marriage. They will never get over the loss of their family and their lives will never be the same. That's the truth. When parents start living separately, your children's lives are turned upside down. And the children now have to begin to decide, what can I say in front of this parent and what can I say in front of that parent? What can I report to this one? What can I... So the children now have to grow up in a way that they are not ready for. It brings about long-lasting financial, emotional, developmental, academic, and psychological repercussions. So before you jump at, I'm going to divorce you, Remember that it's not a decision you are making for you alone. It is a decision you are making for yourself and for your children. That's number one. Number two, divorce will bring you emotional devastation. I've counseled several people after they have received the final judgment of their divorce. When they receive, when the judge finally says we are dissolving the marriage, I've counseled so many people and I have never met one who jubilates. I've never met one who shoots confetti into the skies and throws balloons and says, hey, I'm divorced. I've never, you see, when you finally do get the divorce, you realize that it's fool's gold. It does not give you the emotional reward that you thought you would get from the divorce. It separates us from the person we believed we are going to spend the rest of our lives with. The person we held hands with. The person we slipped a ring onto their finger. The person that we swore before our families and before God that through the good and the bad we will stick with them. And when that is ripped apart, it brings about emotional devastation. Emotional devastation. All right? And you may deny it. And when people are pushing you to go for a divorce, they may deny it. But the truth is, there is always emotional pain. And it doesn't go away just because a sheet of paper says you are no longer together. Divorce is like a type of death. And you will need to grieve the loss of the relationship just as you would if somebody had died. I was talking to, um, I was talking to my cousin Pamela. She's lost um, her parents and I've lost my dad. And we are talking about the loss of, de- the loss of a parent. And, and I said something to her. We are sitting in front of the house. I said, you know what? You never really get over the loss of a parent. You just learn to live with it. You never really get the lo- over the loss of a parent. 
you, you just learn to cope. You learn how to push the thoughts out of your mind quickly. But there are days you still wake up and you are very sad about it. And you keep asking the what if. What if he was still alive? What if this had not happened? And if that, and in the same thing for a relationship, when you come out of a, when you come out of a marriage, you will continue to grieve the loss of that marriage for several years. It's not as easy as you think it is. Brings me to number three. Number three. Divorce brings about the loss of an identity. True story. I was having a meeting and um, one of the people in the meeting is divorced. Okay. And I said, okay, can I have all the married people do this because we wanted to be able to schedule the single and the married people and give timing that would help both groups. I said, can I have all the married people? And she unconsciously got up and went to the married people's side. I was too polite to say, "Um, honey, please, could you move to the left? But that identity when you get a divorce goes. And especially if you live in the African society, Where when they greet you, the next thing they do is they ask about your wife or your husband and then they ask about the children. The moment they see you at a certain age, how are you and how is the wife and how are the children? And you can't keep repeating to everybody, "Eh, last month I was married, this month I'm not. So there's a certain loss of identity. Even taking off the ring is an emotional thing. So, before you decide to go for the divorce, remember that you will experience the loss of identity. When divorce happens, both individuals lose the familiar role of husband and wife. You may be a father, but you are no longer a husband. Even if the marriage is troubled, there's still a certain security knowing that there's somebody you are married to. I've met people who are fighting like cats and dogs. I mean, they are at it. But when the lady has an issue and the husband shows up, and when the woman has an issue, the the wife shows up. So that identity goes. We're discussing the points together uh, before we started. And one of the young people said, based on the things you are talking about, it looks like it's easier to work on the marriage than (laughs) get a divorce. And that's true. All right? That is true. You experience a loss of identity. You lose your identity in it. Then number four. When you have a divorce, you lose a lot of assistance. You lose a lot of assistance. What do I mean by you lose a lot of assistance? Let me use this morning as an example. Well, um, this morning, I had to go to a radio station to do a talk. So when I woke up, um, I asked my wife, I said, could you fix um, a meal for the kids? Um, they're on vacation. I'm going to have to keep them. But I said, so you leave for, uh, let me go do this thing in the radio station. Then I'm going to come back and then I'll pick up the kids. And then you can go to work because she's running some, some trainings, I mean. My wife is a career woman. so And so I said, my schedule is a little bit more relaxed today so I can take them to work. So we actually met on the road and they jumped out of um, her car and jumped into my car. That's assistance. In a divorced couple, you now have to ask yourself, where am I going to put the kids? Am I going to pay for childcare? How sure am I that the person that I'm leaving the kids with are actually going to have the kids' best interest at heart. You are never really sure. When, you're, when your children are with your wife or your children are with your husband, you know when they are hungry, he will feed them. When, when they are tired, if they get dirty, he will give them a bath. If there's an emergency, he will rush them to the hospital. But you lose that assistance the moment you choose to get divorced. You lose the assistance of errands. 
and husbands know this. They call, uh, when coming home, stop and buy bread. Ah, my car has a flat tire. Could you work on it? The husband is calling the wife. Could you help me? Um, could you pick out these clothes and meet me at the airport? You see, in marriage, your lives become so entwined that you keep doing things, especially the longer you've been married, you keep doing things for each other so much that when you rip apart in divorce, you will be surprised at how much work there is out there and how much your partner was putting in there. Because he buys the gas, you do the groceries. Now, as a man, you now have to be looking for someone to go into the market. And when you get into the market, you don't know where the tomato lane is. You don't know where the fish lane is. You have no idea whether meat is sold in pounds or in kilos. And you are all over the place. Now, when you go to the mechanic, you don't know whether it's an oil change problem. You don't know whether it's an electrical problem or it's a mechanical problem. Because every time, he will just take the car and bring it back and it's in good it's in good. Listen, now there are sh- buttons missing from your shirt. And you don't even know where the needle and thread is. Because as you've moved together, even when you have issues, there are things you've learned to do with each other. And the moment you rip apart in divorce, those things are gone. All right? You lose out on the physical security. I know women say, I don't need a man. I I hear feminists talk, you don't need a man. But believe you me, whenever there's a noise outside in the middle of the night, my wife gives me an elbow and says, go and see what's going on. When I hear the dogs barking, I don't tap my wife and say, can you check and see if there's an intruder? No. I step out. Whenever we are going to bed, I go around the whole house and make sure every door is locked. Make sure the padlocks are in place. Make sure the dogs have been released. Make sure that the security man has been spoken to and greeted. I mean... And, do, and vice versa. There are things I haven't bothered myself about for the last 10 years, using myself as an example, simply because I have a loving wife. So you miss out on that physical security. You miss out on domestic assistance. And you miss out on sexual access. She's lying right by you. He's lying right by you. You say, well... Josh, you don't know my wife. I haven't had access to the throne room for the last two months. My brother, I'm sorry. I'll do a podcast to help you. But believe you me. They they once did a study about um, sex. And the amount of sex that married people have cannot be compared with single people. Single people have sex in gluts. She's come to visit for three days. And you try to put your four months... Uh, stress within the, the last three days. The single people behind the cameras are smiling. God forgive you. <laughs> All right? But you lose sexual access. And even if you don't lose sexual access, you lose the peace of mind that comes with sex. Because when you are married to someone, there's no, there's no um, guilt that comes along with sleeping with the person. I mean, you could finish a Bible study and hop onto your partner. In fact, you could be speaking in tongues and the next woman hop onto your partner. But you can't, you can't do that when you are single. So you lose sexual access. Goodness me, we are, we're running out of time. I'll only be able to do five and I'll do um, another five. Number five is that the custody battle is hell. Who keeps the children? Dealing with a couple right now. The man says he can take care of the kids. The lady says you can't. Their lawyers are both at each other's throats. And they are holding their breath because they are not sure who is going to have the kids. And you see, (laughs) fighting over children will change everyone's life. How do you explain to your seven-year-old that tell the judge that mommy is not a good mother and you want to live with me? What does it do to a child? And where do they stay? Do you move out and leave them in the house? And you see, there is no guarantee that the woman gets the kids. There used to be a time where there was a guarantee the woman, there's no guarantee the woman gets the kids. Okay? And do you really want your kids to be raised by another man, calling another man daddy? As you are thinking about these problems, you are gradually realizing that it may be better to work at the marriage. 
Don't worry. If you, by the third episode, if your mind is made up, I'm going to give you tips. I'm going to tell you um, um, what grounds give you, the grounds you have, and so on and so forth. Don't worry. We'll come to that. So it brings us to number six, the Sith reason. The Sith reason why um, you should reconsider the divorce is that you will lose some friends and family. In fact, let me put it this way. You will lose some friends, you will lose some relationships, and you will even lose some access. There are places and people I can relate with because my wife is the key that opens the door. And there are some places and people my wife can relate with because my name is the key that opens the door. When you get divorced, you lose that key. Divorce will have a dramatic effect on your social life. In most social circles, a person's marital status is important and and affects the dynamics of most social circles. In fact, there are even some churches and associations that will not allow you to hold certain roles because you are divorced. I was talking with um, an auntie who was debating an issue. They wanted a, to appoint someone to a particular position. And the feedback was that once he was divorced, they didn't think he, he was suitable for the role. So you lose some friends. Because they are friends you had access to because your wife was their friend first. And by that means, so it's not that they hate you now. It's just a little awkward engaging you now because the relationship has come to an end. So you must also consider that you may say, ah, Josh, this is not something I'm really bothered about. Trust me, when it hits, it hits hard. Especially if they are a couple. Couples often feel more comfortable being friends with other couples. So the minute they split up, they feel like they have to choose. And sometimes they just decide that we choose none of you. (laughs) All right. So making the switch to, I now have to deal with him. And so you will realize that there are certain parties you don't get invited for any longer. Because it's funny, it's a Christmas party and they always used to invite um, you and your wife. And now... They don't know. Can we invite her? Can we invite you? How would the two of you feel there? And if we invited only you and not her and she hears about it, how is she going to feel? And they go, you know what? Uh, Let's just leave them out of this one. So you'll be amazed the number of associations and networks you lose when you get when you get divorced. I'm giving you time to let that sink in. Brings us to number seven. Number seven, it will cause you financial stress. (laughs) Okay. First of all, it's going to cause you stress because when a couple realize they are going to get divorced, one partner normally starts hiding assets and the other partner normally starts investigating for assets. The stress has already begun. I've seen situations where people change um, names on plots of land. They, they switch the names to, um, parents names, but your, as much as you are trying to hide it, your spouse is also has a shovel and your spouse is digging like crazy. So it brings about financial success, uh, stress. How do we split things out? And you see, sometimes the judge will say you are splitting it 50, 50. Now, the judge can award, especially if you live in Africa, the judge can say, we are awarding you this property. Getting the property is another story altogether. The award and the acquisition are two things altogether. All right? And the longer a couple stays married, the more time they have had to build assets. Couples who have been together for a long time often enjoy a great deal of financial stability. And, and here's the thing. Sometimes maybe um, I didn't handle my budget for pocket, pocket money well enough and it's getting to the end of the month and I realize that uh, I don't have too much money on me. I turn to my wife and I say, can I get a loan? If I tell you how much money I owe my wife, oof, sweetheart, pay. I'll give you the money later. <laughs> 
So, and vice versa. Funny joke. Um, I jokingly asked my wife, I said, the money you owe me. And she said, I did it. when I took the money and I said I was borrowing it, it didn't even cross my mind that I'll be paying back. <laughs> so you lose that. All right? It begins to weigh heavy on you. When something runs out, you can turn to the other one, hey, do you have this? And you may say, um, when I get these assets, I'll be fine. Not always. So you may sell stuff. All right? So number seven, it will cause you financial stress. Financial stress. Number eight. In fact, um, I'll bring number eight. Number eight will be better as number 10. So let me give you number nine so my number eight is now my number nine basically i think it will just flow better that way so number eight the process is long on average it takes three years to fix a marriage um to get divorced from the time you file the papers because the judge is first going to recommend that you go for counseling and normally they will recommend about, unless they are issues of domestic abuse, and especially when children are involved, they would um, recommend that you go for about six months counseling and alternative dis uh, dispute resolution. And then after that, the whole process starts. They have to call his witnesses. They have to call your witnesses. You now have to, you go to the courts on some days, the court, the courts go on break for about, is it two to three months in my country? Um, the case is adjourned. You are back. Your lawyer has traveled. On average, it takes three years to get a divorce. On average, it takes three years. So for three years, and you see, you have to go and sit in court and tell stories. Oh, I asked him for this and he said he wouldn't give it to me. And oh, I don't like his mother. And oh, he acts crazy. For three years, your life is on hold. You can't travel. You are stuck in the country because sometimes he may pull a fast one if you try to travel. Or she may pull a fast one. So for three years, your life is on hold. Now, if you went for intense paid counseling, walking through the process of fixing your marriage may take about six months. Six months, three years. A paid counselor where we live probably would take you um, Ghanaian CDs now, probably average, averagely about 3,000 Ghana CDs to take you through those sessions. A divorce lawyer, averagely cheapest, 15,000 Ghana CDs. The process is not as quick. And, and, and we see it all the time. I was dealing with a guy and he said, I'm just going to divorce her and be free. That was three years ago. And they are still there. Recently, the, the judge has traveled. <laughs> Please, I'm not laughing at your pain. And if you are watching this, forgive me for using... Anyway, no one will know is your example. I've, I've spoken to several people. The judge has traveled. You understand me? So the process is long. It's not quick. It doesn't happen as fast as you want to. Even the search for a lawyer is a chore on its own. And then finding her to serve her the papers. Okay? Great. That brings me to number nine. It takes three to seven years to recover from a divorce. And here's an interesting fact. It takes men longer to recover from a divorce than it takes women. I don't know why. That's what the statistics say. You see, you can be free of him on paper or you can be free of her on paper, but you can't be so easily free of your spouse emotionally and psychologically for some of you who have got divorced your spouse is still living rent free in your head they are not paying rent but every morning they are in your mind and you see if you have a spiteful spouse 
they can make the recovery process terrible. I know a particular person who got divorced and he will not send the monthly money until the lady calls. Just to prove a point. You understand me? So, um, if it's going to take three to seven years to recover, when we say three to seven years to recover, to stabilize your life, to stabilize yourself financially, to go through the process of overcoming the pain and the disappointment, it's going to be three to seven years before you are even ready to begin to consider your best life. Now, they gauge it at, for every, I think for every five years of marriage, you need about two years of recovery. That's how, so that's the equation, that's the permutation some people have put together. So if you're married for 10 years, they know it's going to be between four to thereabout. And how acrimonious the divorce was is also going to count. So if it's going to take you that long to recover and that long to, if you have children, it's even, it's even more messy. Are you getting me? Then it brings us to number 10. Number 10. You often hear people say, I'm going to divorce you and I'm going to get a better woman. Second marriages are harder than first marriages and have a lower success rate. If you get married in 2022, your marriage has a 65 to 70 percent success rate. You know, divorces in the early to mid 90s was 50 50. It has fallen. Now it's only about um, 35 percent to 40 percent of couples that get married that seek a divorce. So unlike what people are saying, divorces are falling, okay? Because of several reasons. One, people are marrying later now, so they know what they are getting into. Two, people like us are putting up relational information out there, so people are able to work issues out, and people are able to cope a little bit more than they used to in the late 90s to the early 2000s. So divorce rates are falling. So don't be deceived that divorce is very popular now the reason why it seems popular is that the world our population has boomed all right but a second marriage has about i think so a first marriage has about 65 percent success rate a second marriage has about a 45 percent success rate why There's a Ghanaian proverb, and probably most of our proverbs cut across most African countries. It says, a dead goat does not fear a knife. A dead goat does not fear a knife. Which means that when someone has been divorced before, they don't struggle to divorce a second time. And when people are getting married after a divorce, they don't put their all into their marriage this time. Because they've been down that road. So if you really think I'm going to divorce him and I'm going to get a better man, it's not that easy. And this time you are getting married with the insecurities, the baggage, because if you are getting married a second time, you are now bringing your children into that marriage and he is now bringing his children into that marriage. And even the children coping within the marriage creates marital stress. A blended family is problematic. So second marriages do not work as well as first marriages so if you are in a marriage and the marriage is terrible work at it please work at it please 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 work at it give it your all don't be too quick to jump the gun i mean i'm gonna come to reasons why you should look there are certain situations when people put them before me i tell the lady or i tell the man run for your life I'm not saying never get divorced. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm trying to say is that, and I I can't remember the statistics, so I'll not throw it out there before someone fat checks me. But majority of the marriages that end up in divorce are from issues that could be fixed. So if there is still a chance of fixing it and divorce is not that easy, please don't get a divorce. This is the Marriage Clinic Podcast. My name is Joshua Mogri. We are here to give you information to help you in your relationships. 
to help you with love, to help you with your marriage and your personal development. Today, I've been talking about the 10 reasons to reconsider a divorce. I said, number one, divorce will hurt your children. Number two, divorce brings emotional devastation. Number three, you may experience loss. Number four, you lose your assistance, a lot of assistance. Number five, the custody battles are difficult. Number six, you will lose some friends. Number seven, you, it will cause you financial stress. Number eight, the process is long. Number nine, recovery takes a long time. And number 10, second marriages do not work as well as first marriages. All right. Next week, I'm going to be coming to you with when it's okay to get a divorce. I'm going to come to you with when it's okay to get a divorce. And we're going to go down the line. I'll talk to you about the procedure. I spoke to a lawyer friend of mine and um, in some episodes to come, I'm going to have an interview with him and he's going to walk us through the process and help you make the right decisions. And then I'll end with how to protect yourself against divorces. I trust and I know this has helped you. Um, it's blessed you. Please put in a comment. Please share this with a friend. If you do have a friend who is seriously considering divorce, I want to ask you and beg you to please talk to them, share this podcast with them. Um, go to all my social media handles. You find it there on Twitter, on Facebook, um, on YouTube. You should find it there. I do put excerpts of it on my TikTok, which is also fine. And um, you could go to my website, joshuamogri.com, and also find some resources there. Um, it's been good spending time with you. I pray for you that if you are in a problematic marriage, that God sends you help. And for those who are not in problematic marriages, I pray you never experience divorce in Jesus' name. Take good care of yourself and see you next time.